week, I've been finding out about problems with artificial intelligence, AI. Ah, the inevitable rise of super-intelligent robot overlords. No. Oh. Well, not exactly. Oh. It's the problem of not knowing what a computer is thinking. Our very own reporter, Davide Castelvecchi, has written a feature on the topic this week, so I dragged him from his news desk to explain more. So the article is about not so much what can we do with AI, but if AI gives us a certain answer, how do we know how it came to that answer? So it's kind of, can we trust the computers? Or there can be situations where we know that they are giving the right answer, but we don't know why. And this is a particular particular kind of AI, isn't it? Not just computers in general. Correct. So it's a kind of AI that has uh, kind of taken the world by storm in the last uh, four years or so. It's called deep learning. And deep learning is kind of a, a revival of an early form of AI called neural networks, which is inspired by the way that neurons are uh, networked in the brain. And... Because these, these neural networks learn by sifting through large sets of data, and the more data they go through, the smarter they become. So the idea is that rather than trying to program all the information into a computer, you invent a computer that can learn, like the human brain can learn. You feed it information and it works things out for itself. So what's the problem with this? The problem, problem is we don't quite know in detail how the human brain learns. And Similarly, we don't know how a neural network learns. I mean, we have some clues. But we, we designed them. How can we not know what they're doing? Because we just let them do their thing. So it tweaks all these little formulas that it has inside. We didn't program, we didn't tell the algorithm what patterns to look for. It's very different from a classical algorithm. People describe it as a black box because it really, we don't know what patterns it's, it's learning to, to see, unless we start opening this black box. So, Adam, that's AI's black box problem. Well, it doesn't sound like a very serious problem. The program AlphaGo used deep learning, right? And that mastered the ancient board game Go and beat a top player. Deep learning is clearly pretty nifty, so does it actually matter if we don't know how it does its magic? Well, maybe not for winning at board games, but it depends what you're using it for. I spoke with Dean Pomelo, a researcher who stumbled across the black box problem while sitting in a driverless car. Back in 1988, what we did was we took a big workstation of the time, put it in the back of a Chevy van, and fed camera images into the computer that basically learned to map directly the images that it was being fed into steering commands in order to keep the vehicle on the road. We drove several hundred miles at a stretch without touching the steering wheel, but there were circumstances when things would get thrown off. Coming up to a bridge, it got confused, and uh, you know I had to take over to avoid it like steering into the edge of the bridge. But it's often difficult to tease out exactly what the network is, is as you will, thinking. So uh, it's often the case that um, you know, the, the system learns to key off idiosyncrasies in the environment that you really wish it wouldn't. So there had been a nice grass on the side of the road that this had become part of the, the, the model that the system had learned to rely on. But, you know, that grass, as we know, will go away when you get to a bridge. But, Dean, that sounds like it could just be solved by better training, showing it more images, more varied images. If you can train a computer to be really accurate in a lot of circumstances, is it still a problem to not know what it's thinking? I believe that it is. I mean, they're using machine learning and artificial neural networks now to diagnose diseases, say by uh, having them analyze mammogram photographs. And the doctor would really like to know why the system thinks this particular mammogram scan has a breast tumor in it, not just, yep, it's there somewhere, you figure it out. That was Dean Pomelo from the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon. That mammogram example is pretty important for any research uses of neural networks, because researchers don't just want answers, they want explanations. And if you don't know what your computer's thinking, your driverless van might just drive up the bridge. I'm not going anywhere near that or any driverless van. But the point is, even if it was safe 99.9% .9 of the time, 
you still can't be sure how it will react to unexpected circumstances. Jeff Kloon has been studying this kind of AI in the lab and accidentally found out just how dumb artificial intelligence can be. I'm assuming we're about to hear from Jeff or you wouldn't be bringing this up. We are indeed. Here's Jeff. Our discovery that deep neural networks are easily fooled was the classic case of scientific serendipity. And so we had an AI artist and uh, its job was to create a picture and then we would show that picture to the AI judge. And the AI judge was a pre-trained uh, neural network that knew how to recognize 1,000 different types of images. So it had been trained to recognize motorcycles and bananas and trees. And the AI artist would create a picture and at the initially it was a random picture. We would show it to the AI judge and the AI judge would say, oh yeah, that's a banana with you know 1% probability, but really that doesn't look anything like a banana. And then the AI artist would make a few changes to the picture and show it back to the AI judge. And the AI judge would say, okay, now that's like maybe like a 2% banana, but still very, very far. And the AI artist would keep tweaking the picture and showing it to the judge and kind of making images that looked more and more like bananas and motorcycles and trees. So we initially hoped and thought that the AI artist would produce beautiful renderings of trees and bananas and motorcycles. But instead what we got was this huge class of images where the AI judge was absolutely certain that the AI artist produced an example of a motorcycle and a banana. And then when we looked at these thousand images, they were all completely unrecognizable. They were just garbage. They just looked like endless static, like a TV tuned to a dead channel. And it turned out that the mistake was within the AI judge that these state-of-the-art deep neural networks that everybody's investing billions of dollars in trying to put on driverless cars and you know almost every Google product out there, that these systems can be easily tricked into thinking that they're seeing something and they're certain that they're seeing something when in fact what they're seeing is completely unrecognizable. That was Jeff Kloon from the University of Wyoming. That does seem kind of like a fatal flaw if your AI can easily be fooled. Okay, I'm convinced. Let's give up on deep learning. But... What if the computers could tell us what they're thinking? Ah. Take Dean Pomlo's driverless cars. If you could get the computer to produce an image of what it thinks it's seeing, it's so basically its mental image of the scene, you can tell pretty quickly when it's getting confused and hopefully why. And presumably grab the steering wheel in time. Hopefully. Well, until we work all this out, I'm staying well away from driverless cars. Understandable. Thanks to Dean Pomelo and Jeff Kloon. And we also heard from Nature reporter Davide Castelvecchi, whose feature is online at nature.com forward slash news. You can also check out our video on the computer that mastered Go at youtube.com forward slash nature video channel. Slightly abbreviated show this week as we're skipping the news chat. I know that sounds like heresy on the week that the Nobel Prizes for Science are announced, but fear not. We're going to release this week's news chat as a podcast extra, so we have time to cover the chemistry prize, which is announced last. Keep an ear out for that, arriving in your podcast feed shortly. Still to come later in the show, using mini organs to find out how stem cells accumulate mutations. But now it's time for the research highlights, read by Noah Baker. 